up YouTube? So in what turned out to be an explosive interview, Gail King sat down with R&B singer R. Kelly to discuss the charges of sexual abuse that have followed him throughout his career, starting in the 90s up until today. I'm gonna be breaking down the body language displayed by both R. Kelly and Gail in the interview, since body language can sometimes tell us more than what a person actually says out their mouth. According to experts, body language makes up a huge part of communication. From our facial expressions to our body movements, the things we don't say can still convey volumes of information. And body language analysis can be used to detect when someone appears to be telling the truth and when they appear to be deceptive. I'm not an expertly trained body language analyst, but I have been studying body language on my own for years as a hobbyist because I'm very interested in the way people communicate both verbally and non-verbally, especially when those people are in the public eye. So let's get started. I'm surprised that you agreed to do it. Why are you sitting down with us today? I'm very tired of all of the uh, lies. I've been hearing things and, you know, and seeing things on the blogs and, you know, I'm just, I'm just tired. In the first 20 seconds of the interview, the body language of R. Kelly is very telling. He is seated facing Gail head on, face to face with no barrier in between them. But although his body is facing Gail and she is looking directly at him, when he begins to speak to her, he actually darts his eyes away several times. Let's look again at R. Kelly's eyes when he speaks to Gail. I'm surprised that you agreed to do it. Why are you sitting down with us today? I'm very tired of all of the uh, lies. I've been hearing things and, you know, and seeing things on the blogs and, you know, I'm just, I'm just tired. According to body language experts, darting eyes mean the person feels insecure. They are often looking for an escape route from talking to you. So from the very start of the interview, R. Kelly's eye movements indicate that he is actually very insecure with Gail and that he's looking for a way out of the conversation. We'll see later in the interview that R. Kelly does actually find a way out of conversing with Gail. But let's continue. But why are you sitting down with us today? I'm very tired of all of the uh, lies. I've been hearing things and, you know, and seeing things on the blogs and, you know, I'm just, I'm just tired. What are the lies that you're hearing that disturb you most? Oh my God, um, all of them. Um, got little girls trapped in the basement, helicopters over my house, mm -hmm. um, trying to um, rescue someone that doesn't need rescuing because they're not in my house. Hey. R. Kelly lists the accusations against him in a way that is meant to express absurdity. He laughs while naming some of the allegations against him as if they are ridiculous. And he continues to dart his eyes away from Gail, which indicates he is still uncomfortable with the conversation with her. However, he does look her straight in the eyes at one point when he says the girls living in his house don't need to be rescued. His body language indicates that the, he believes that the girls with him don't need to be rescued. It's one of the few moments when he looks Gail straight in the eye and it appeared to indicate that he was saying what he believed to be true, that the girls don't need to be rescued. Have you done anything that you regret? Have you done anything wrong? Lots of things wrong when it comes to women that I apologize, but I apologize in those relationships at the time I was in the relationships. Here, R. Kelly indicates that he has done women wrong in his past, and his furrowed brow and him looking directly into Gail's eyes reveal that he desperately wants her to believe him. He is painting a picture for Gail, and he is using his arm movements to separate the charges he is accused from on the left from what he has actually done on the right. You'll notice that up until now, he has looked to his left when he has recalled information about the allegations against him, but now he uses his arms to direct Gail to his right to indicate that what he has done is totally opposite of what he's been accused of. He desperately wants Gail to believe that what he has done is totally different from what he's being accused of. Have you okay. broken any laws when it comes to women? Absolutely not. The six part series interviewed 50 people, mm -hmm. family members, your former tour manager, numerous women who all claim that you abused them. Yeah. Are you saying everybody in that documentary was not telling the truth about you? Everybody? If, if, if you really look at that documentary, which I'm sure you have. I have. Everybody said something bad about me. Nobody said nothing good. Mm -hmm. 
they was describing Lucifer. I'm not Lucifer. I'm a man. I make mistakes, but I'm not a devil. And by no means am I a monster. In this clip, R. Kelly is looking Gail in her eyes when he tells her that he felt the documentary was not balanced because it only focused on the negative things about him. He appeared to be speaking honestly because he is looking Gail directly in her eyes. But you'll notice when Gail directly questions him and asks if everything that was said about him was a lie, he says that they're lying, which is a negative emotion, but he shakes his head up and down in the affirmative. You're saying everything they said in that documentary about you is not true. They are lying on me. You're saying everything they said in that documentary about you is not true. They are lying on me. This is called incongruence. He is expressing a negative response verbally, but physically he is responding in the affirmative. This incongruence is most commonly seen when someone is purposely trying to be deceptive. Why would these women say the same thing about you? that you are controlling, that you are abusive, that you tell women when to eat, when to go to the bathroom, when they can sleep, where they can dress. Why would all these women tell these different stories about you if they were not true and they don't know each other? That defies logic to me. When R. Kelly is listening to Gail list the allegations against him, he is shaking his head to indicate that he believes the allegations are absurd. Making the allegations against him seem absurd is a tactic that has worked for R. Kelly in the past when it was rumored that he married 15-year-old Aaliyah when he was 27. The allegations against him then and now are incredible and hard to believe, so he uses the fact that the allegations are hard for some people to believe to his advantage, and here he uses his body to indicate again that they are absurd. However, you may also notice that R. Kelly's lips are pursed very tightly as Gail is speaking about the allegations against him. According to body language experts, pursed lips indicate that a person is purposefully withholding information. They're keeping a tight lock on what they're willing to share. And so we can tell from R. Kelly's pursed lips that he is not willing to share all of the truth of the situation. Until you hear the explanation. You can start a rumor on a guy like me or a celebrity just like that. All you have to do is push a button on your phone and say, so-and-so did this to me, R. Kelly did this to me. And if you get any traction from that, if, you, if you're able to write a book from that, if you're able to get a, a, a reality show, then any girl that I had a relationship in the past that I, it just didn't work out, she can come and say the same exact thing. In this clip, R. Kelly begins to become very agitated. This is where his agitation really becomes evident. He is pointing his finger at Gail while expressing himself, and he points at her several times. According to body language experts, pointing a finger at a person while speaking is an authoritative gesture. People do this when imposing themselves. Parents do it to their children, teachers do it to unruly students. It's a way of talking down, usually interpreted as aggressive and angry. When done to appear, it's a show of arrogance. It's confrontational, invasive, and offensive. So R. Kelly pointing directly at Gail at the start of his explanation and several times during his explanation indicates that he was trying to get authority over her. It indicates that he felt that he was not in a position of control and wanted to gain control of the situation by showing dominance over her. I do have to say that it did not seem to work well, as we'll see throughout the interview. Gail was not responsive to R. Kelly's aggressive behavior, and you can tell that from her body language, which never actually changed during the interview. She started the interview with her legs crossed and her body facing him, and she continued to maintain that same position throughout the entire interview. Have you ever had sex no. with anyone under the age of 17? No. Never? No. I have to tell you, it's so hard to believe that based on all that we've read I'm gonna tell and what you the women have said about you. I'm what tell the you women something. have said about you. Here we see R. Kelly point his finger at Gail again when she responds that it's hard for her to believe that R. Kelly has never been intimate with a woman under the age of 17. Gail is being honest about her beliefs and looking R. Kelly directly in his face and is challenging him. And his response, again, is to start pointing his finger at Gail as if he is a parent reprimanding a child. In response to his aggression, Gail leans in closer to R. Kelly, putting her face closer to his face. 
This indicates that she does not feel threatened by R. Kelly. She is willing to get closer to him and even raise her voice over his because she is not accepting the position of dominance that he has tried to take in the interview. Although R. Kelly has pointed his finger at her several times and been visibly aggressive, Gail is not showing any signs of backing down from him. So they're lying on you. That's your explanation. They're lying on you. Absolutely. So they're lying on you. That's your explanation. They're lying on you. Absolutely. Here is another example of incongruence on the part of R. Kelly. When Gail asks him if all of the women are lying on him, he responds in the affirmative by saying absolutely, but he shakes his head in the negative. There is incongruence between what he is saying verbally and his nonverbal communication. This incongruence indicates deception. I think the point you're making is, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you have never held anybody against their will. I don't need to. They, Why would I? Well, I'm, I'm, How stupid would it never be held for anybody? R. Kelly with all I've been through in my way, way past to hold somebody, let alone four, five, six, fifty, you said. Why, how stupid would I be to do that? I didn't say you That's were holding... That's stupid, guys. I, I didn't... Is this camera on me? <laughs> yes, it's on. That's stupid. Use your common sense. Don't... Forget the blogs. Forget how you feel about me. Hate me if you want to. Love me if you want. But just use your common sense. How stupid would it be for me to, with my crazy past and what I've been through, oh, right now I just think I need to be a monster and hold girls against their will, chain them up in my basement, and, and don't let them eat and don't let them out unless they need some shoes down the street from their uncle. Here is where things are starting to hit the fan. R. Kelly is very animated in explaining how quote unquote stupid it would be to believe that he holds women hostage. He is using his hands and arms in a very aggressive manner while he was speaking and he even pounds his fist into his hand at one point. Fist pounding is a very obvious sign of aggression. R. Kelly has demonstrated in this interview that he becomes aggressive when he is not in control. And the fist pounding is where his aggression level is starting to rise, but instead of directing his aggression to Gail, he redirects it to the camera. Remember at the beginning of the video, I told you that R. Kelly's darting his eyes away from Gail indicated that he was not comfortable with the conversation and that he was subconsciously looking for a way to escape the conversation. Directing his attention to the camera is R. Kelly's way of escaping the conversation with Gail. His body language from the start indicated that he did not feel comfortable talking to Gail and throughout the interview his aggressive body language like when he pointed at her indicated that he wanted to gain control of the interview. However, Gail's body language indicated that she was not intimidated by him so now he has given up on trying to gain control over Gail and he has chosen to escape the conversation with Gail and instead direct his attention directly to the camera. Robert. Stop it. Y'all quit playing. Quit playing. Robert. I didn't do this stuff. This is not me, y'all. I'm fighting for my life. Y'all killing me with this I gave y'all 30 years of my career. Robert. 30 years of my career. Y'all trying to kill me. You're killing me, man. This is not about music. I'm trying to have a relationship with my kids. And I can't do it. Y'all just don't want to believe the truth. You don't want to believe it. Here, R. Kelly's aggression has become obvious. He is standing up, screaming, and pounding on his chest. He is trying desperately to convince the world that he is not guilty of the charges against him. And he is playing the victim, which is why you see him begin to tear up and his voice cracks. However, this is another example of incongruence because although his words indicate that he is a victim of society, the fact that he is standing up, yelling, and beating on his chest indicates that he's not a victim, but an aggressor. This incongruence reveals that R. Kelly is attempting to be deceptive. Told me we're gonna destroy your career. But Kelly's emotions remained raw. It's real girls out there missing. It's real young girls out there being abducted being raped, okay? They really are 
on chains. They really do have chains on their uh, on their wrists, and they can't get out. Robert, and they're ending up buried in deep. Robert, we have to have a conversation. Really, I, I don't. Want As to. R. Kelly begins to calm down, he continues to talk directly to the camera instead of to Gail. Again, this is because he is not comfortable speaking with Gail. He still wants to escape the conversation with her and instead say what he wants to say directly to the camera. And you can see he even turns his head away from Gail very sharply as if he is ignoring her. He only looks back at Gail when she asks him what kind of help he needs. This indicates that he is receptive to being viewed as a victim. You're just ranting at the camera. Well, I, think I came here for them to hear me okay, talk. But I need help. What kind of help? This is the kind of help I need. Yes, what kind of help? I need somebody to help me not have a big heart because my heart is so big, people betray me and I keep forgiving them. It's very important to note that R. Kelly ranted and raved at the camera for several minutes, who knows how long, but he only returned to looking Gail in her eyes when she, for a moment, played into his attempt to look like a victim. You sound like you're playing the victim here. You sound like R. Kelly, you do. You sound like you're playing the victim here. You sound like R. Kelly, you do. Then when Gail outright tells him that he is playing the victim, you can see R. Kelly's head fall into his hand. According to body language experts, letting your head fall into your hands is a sign of defeat. When Gail pulls his car and outright tells him it's obvious that he's playing the victim, R. Kelly's body language indicates that he feels defeated. His aggression did not work and his attempt to play the victim did not work. And now we can see physically, by his body language, that R. Kelly feels defeated. When I listen to you, I'm it just does sound the like truth. you're playing the victim I'm card. just telling the truth. Next, R. Kelly begins to defend himself and says that he is just telling the truth. But again, while his words say that he is being truthful, which is affirmative, his body language is portraying negativity. He is shaking his head no while speaking of being truthful. This is another example of incongruence because his body language does not match what is coming out of his mouth. And this is another indicator of deception. It appears that R. Kelly is being deceptive when he says that he's telling the truth. And it's a very obvious deception. When I listen to you, I'm it just does telling sound the like truth. you're playing the victim I'm card. just telling the truth. And the reason I'm emotional Robert, and I apologize you, for that no, is no, because no, this no. is the first time I was able to, to say speak. something. Yeah. I've said nothing. Throughout this entire interview, R. Kelly's body language has been very easy to read. His eyes indicated from the start that he did not want to speak to Gail. He was very aggressive during the interview and even directed his aggression at Gail at times. But when his attempts to intimidate Gail did not work, he gave up on speaking to her. He attempted to speak directly to the camera, but his body language, which was very aggressive, did not match the words that he was saying as he tried to play the victim. And that incongruence was a clear sign of deception. Based on his body language, in my opinion, this entire interview has been an act of deception by R. Kelly. But what do you think? Do you think R. Kelly was being open and honest in this interview? Or do you think he was being deceptive and trying to get the public to see him as a victim? Leave a comment and let me know what you think. As always, thanks for watching. That's it for the video, but if you want more from me, head on over to Facebook where I'm launching my new Facebook show, Honey Child. Honey Child is where I'll be sharing more celebrity news and entertainment stories and doing a little girl chat. So head on over to facebook.com slash TV one and hit the like button. Attention YouTubers, you've asked and I'm delivering. I'm sharing with you step-by-step step my secrets to making money on YouTube. And my free guide, How to Make Money on YouTube, is the first step to learning exactly what to do to make money on YouTube. So go to my new website, howtomakemoneyonyt.com to download your copy today. The link is here on the screen, it's in the description box, and it's in the comments, so you can't miss it.